Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I am so happy to meet you again in this very important and very hard lectures and very hard project. But it's really my dream since long time. How to use transcranial Doppler in approaching a comatose patient if you suspect central cause of coma step-by-step -step approach how to use how to use this non-invasive very unique tool in management of patient you will enjoy this lecture but really it's hard and need you to listen uh, and to repeat more than one time before i start i need to announce about this a uh, new coming conference for Alexa international Cor conference for the department of anesthesia and surgical icu in alexandria university egypt will be where between 24 to 26 of september and will give uh, adv an advanced critical care ultrasound course uh, will be two days with the skill station lectures 26 and 27 of september uh, and you will see here all the varieties of advanced critical care echo. It is really the subject and the skill station will be for the one who has the basic skill for critical care ultrasound. Uh, if you have this basic skill, you will enjoy the course and you will get something new because we'll talk about optic nerve sheet diameter, transcranial Doppler. We'll talk about how to use the ultrasound in weaning process. We'll talk about advanced fast, rush protocol, blue protocol. But believe me, you need to have a basic principle for uh, critical care ultrasound. If you have that, I greatly encourage you to attend this course. will be uh, in Alexandria. Uh, Hilton Alexander Green Plaza in 26 and 27 of September uh, will be me and uh, Professor Walid Habashi, Professor Ashraf Tayar, all are very interested uh, in uh, critical care ultrasound and I'm uh, sure you will enjoy this course inshallah. Okay, let us start about the coma protocol. I have a lot of case report about transcranial Doppler uh, in the EC emergency medicine and the critical care. This is one of the case report. Really, I talk about how if the patient, how if your patient is comatose and you cannot shift to the CT scan and you don't have the facility of CT scan nearby. How to use a transcranial Doppler to approach this central causes of coma. I believe you will enjoy this uh, case report with all videos and images. And this journal is an open access journal. It's free for anyone who just write the article and you will find the case report. Let us talk about a case scenario and I will give you a step-by-step -step approach how to approach the central causes of coma and after that we'll come back to our patient. This our patient, 50 years old male patient, known case of sickle cell disease, chronic renal failure on regular hemodialysis, severe hypertension on four, four types of medications of uh, high blood pressure. He was admitted in another hospital because of vasoclusive crisis for which he received analgesic and because of persistence of high blood pressure, he received the repeated IV dose of hydralazine and labetalone. During hemodialysis session, he complained of dizziness, weakness, decreased conscious level, low blood pressure. He shifted to our ICU with bad conscious level. He was hemodynamically unstable, blood pressure 120 over 60 or noradrenaline 25. Mechanically ventilated on low setting, wheel saturated, chest clear, heart, tachycardia, abdomen, soft relax. When I saw the patient, he was deeply comatose with 3 over 5 gallus coma scale, dilated fixed pupil, which were reacted one hour back. Okay, now we are facing of comatose, badly comatose patient, acutely bad comatose patient, so it's all, all the, it's most probably going with central cause of the coma. Let us 
talk about about the protocol of transcranial Doppler in a comatose patient. If you suspect a central cause of coma, because you know metabolic cause of the coma usually take time, gradual, there is background of hepatic element, uh, liver, uh, renal element, cardiac element, uh, chest element, but the central coma usually it is sudden. Usually it's very rapid, very quick, very acute, okay? So if you suspect an, a central cause of coma, use this protocol. First, execute hypoglycemia. After that, through the temporal window of the transcranial Doppler, look at the ventricular system. Explore the ventricular system, sir, and lateral ventricle. Four, size dilatation for presence of the blood inside the ventricle and for midline shift. And I will give you a link in my YouTube channel how to do it very simply and it's life study. How to, do, to assess the ventricular system very easy and how to assess for midline shift very easy life study i will give you the link and i will give you all the references which validated this transcranial doppler way of assessment of the particular system you see this is the lateral ventricle and this is the third ventricle very easy to see by transcranial doppler once you get butterfly of midbrain Slide the probe up to get this third ventricle and lateral ventricle. Very easy to see. It is CT picture, like CT picture. I will give you the link to, to, to help you for this regard. Once you get the ventricle, you can measure it. This is the third ventricle, more than one centimeter. It is dilated. Number one, normal size. Ventricle on CT and MRI show third ventricle to be less than 5 millimeter in children, less than 7 millimeter in adult less than 60 years, and less than 9 millimeter in adult above 60 years old. This is the reference. Look for the CSF inside the ventricular system. If it's jet black, it's normal. If it's white ecogenic, that means there's blood in the ventricle. This is a reference which raises the importance of transcranial Doppler in assessment of the ventricular system, size and intraventricular bleed. This is the midline shift. You see, this is the butterfly of midbrain. This is anterior, this is posterior, this is left side. You will measure the distance from the skin to the wall of said ventricle from the left side and you repeat in the right side and you will subtract small value from the large value and divide by two you divide by two you will get the how many centimeter is the midline shift so if you measure the distance from the skin and third ventricle, left and right side, the short distance, the midline shift will be towards the short distance. And how much is the midline shift? Subtract the short distance from the long distance and divide by two will give you the value of how much the midline shift exactly. This is a reference which is talk about the importance of transcranial Doppler in determining of the midline shift. And this is the Cite the link in my YouTube channels, which will teach you how easy you can do the assessment of the ventricular system by transcranial Doppler. It is a light study. This is very important link. If there is significant midline shift, please look for hyperechoic area denoting hemorrhage and arrange for CT brain and core neurosurgery. So, first, any abnormality of the ventricular system, increasing size, blood inside, or midline shift, please CT 
and arrange for calling neurosurgery because it could it may need neurosurgical assessment and if there is midline shift you need to assess the presence of hemorrhage you need to assess the hyperechoic area in the area of long distance which is hem recent hemorrhage causing midline shift and this is a link of how to use transcranial Doppler to assess intracranial bleed and you will see a lot of cases, very clear cases about intracranial bleed. It is in my YouTube channel. You see here, very clear hyperechoic area of recent bleed, clear hyperechoic area in recent, in recent bleed. This is the reference which is talking about the importance of transcranial Doppler in the assessment of intracranial bleed. And this transcranial Doppler is validated against CT in case of diagnosing cerebral, uh, cerebral hemorrhage and in case of diagnosing midline shift uh, of the uh, second. First, you will assess the ventricular system to diagnose hydrocephalus, intracranial bleed, midline shift, intraventricular hemorrhage as a cause of central coma. Second, look at the transcranial Doppler signs of increased intracranial pressure. You look for increased pulse tilt index of bilateral mid-cerebral artery. You look for optic nerve sheet diameter bilateral. What's the pulse tilt index? This is the flow study of the middle cerebral artery. This is the big systolic velocity and this is the end of the systolic velocity. In, in cerebral, in basal cerebral arteries and in any arteries which is nourishing vital organ, you need a very good diastolic flow because vital organ receive blood in both diastole and systole so you need very good diastolic flow and the diastolic flow could be almost 50 percent of systolic flow the pulsatility index will give us a clue about the relationship between diastolic velocity diastolic flow and systolic flow pulsatility index how to measure it? It is systolic velocity minus diastolic velocity over mean velocity. So, if the diastolic velocity is high, that means pulsatility index will be low. And you don't expect the pulsatility index more than one. If more than one, that means there is increase in the pulsatility index and that means there is pressure inside the brain and there is pressure in the basal cerebral artery during the stool and this will cause low diastolic flow and give us an idea about increased intracranial pressure. This is optic nerve sheet diameter. It shouldn't be more than 0.58. If more than 0.58, it's going with increased acral pressure. How to measure it? Measure from here, not the optic nerve, the biometer, this is a CSF. You will measure from here, dura, to here, dura. Use it, please use it. Please, using pulsatility index in Diagnose increase the credit pressure, you need to be sure from other parameter to be checked before using it. Because pulsatility index are not dependent, are not dependent solely on change of intercranial pressure, but also in cerebral perfusion pressure, arterial blood pressure and its pulsatility, variation in partial pressure of CO2 and the heart rate. So you need to be sure heart rate is not is in normal range and CO2 in the normal range and the mean arterial pressure is in the normal range and the pulsatility which is pulse pressure is not so high. Fulfilling this criteria will give pulsatility index a very diagnostic power of increased intercalibration. Otherwise, please 
This is the reference which talk about volatility index in intracranial pressure diagnosis. Otherwise, please use both together. Use volatility index as well as the optic nerve sheet diameter in diagnosis of increased intracranial pressure by transcranial Doppler. And this is very important case report in the EC Emergency Medicine and the Critical Care Journal, which I used both together and this increase the power of diagnosis of intracranial pressure if we use both optic nerve sheet diameter and the volatility index together in uh, the patient by assessment with transcranial Doppler. Moreover, there is another parameter which help you and increase the diagnostic power of transcranial Doppler in diagnosis, increase intracranial pressure, which is combining the volatility index and the optic nerve sheet diameter and while assessment of optic nerve sheet diameter please have a look of the optic of the central retinal artery doppler study central retinal artery doppler study is another parameter which will give you an idea about increased intracranial pressure if there is increase in the volatility index and the receptivity index of the central retinal artery as any intracranial artery and this is present very clearly in this case, in this, my case report in EC Emergency Medicine and the Critical Care Journal, and it is an open access journal. You can see all these case reports with videos and the imaging uh, free if just go to the site of the journal. And in this case report, I use the Doppler study in the central retinal artery in diagnosis increased the current pressure, as well as in, with other parameter which is volatility index and optic nerve sheet diameter. And there is good news. You can go directly to cerebral perfusion pressure and be sure it is in the right way by uh, using this great formula, which is non-invasive cerebral perfusion pressure equal mean arterial pressure multiplied by flow velocity, diastolic flow velocity of the uh, middle cerebral artery minus mean uh, so flow velocity of the medicinal artery plus 14 and this give, give you an idea which is very uh, which is validated against uh, intracranial measurement of cerebral uh, perfusion pressure so it is really validated method and give you a great idea about cerebral perfusion pressure which is our target at the end of the day okay you are assessing the ventricular system to exclude hydrocephalus, intraventricular bleed, midline shift, and the intracranial bleed. In this way, you will go directly to do CT and consider neurosurgical consultation. Second, you will assess the signs of increased acral pressure, especially if there is no midline shift. If the transcranial Doppler signs of increased intracranial pressure, which is increased volatility index, increased optic nerve sheet diameter without midline shift and cerebral hemorrhage, please start the dehydrating measure and check the absence or sluggish flow at both middle cerebral artery and basal artery to exclude malignant stroke. Because if you don't have midline shift, you don't have hydrocephalus, but you have increased intracranial pressure, there is very common scenario you need to exclude, which is the malignant, recent malignant stroke. Recent malignant stroke will lead to massive infarction, which will give signs of increased intracranial pressure by transcranial Doppler, but will not be, will not lead to midline shift so early. It needs time for edema to accumulate and lead to midline shift. So in this situation, you need to go to the basal cerebral artery and check for cutoff sign or absence of flow in this basal cerebral artery. You see here, this is the midbrain, right side. Here is the posterior cerebral artery. Here is the middle cerebral artery. From the right side, you see no flow in the middle cerebral artery, but good flow in the left middle cerebral artery. This is a cause of acute malignant stroke 
which will lead to increased decline pressure, but will not lead to midline shift. Last, now you exclude surgical causes, ventricular dilatation, midline shift. You exclude, you, you diagnose intracranial pressure hypertension, also by transcranial Doppler, and you exclude Ill, uh, acute stroke by flow study of the basal artery and at the last you need to exclude the subarachnoid hemorrhage and CNS infection which will lead to signs of increased intracranial pressure but will not lead to midline shift and in this situation I encourage you to check for the increased velocity of the basal seven artery flow because this will appear in spasm of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and will appear in CNS infection. And there is here another case report uh, with, which reveals a great role of brain ultrasound as monitoring tool in proper management of case of TB meningitis, which reveal how the flow velocity is important in case of uh, infection, subacute infection of the brain by causing vasculitis and vasculitic uh, vas vascular affection. This is also my case report in the EC chromium emerges with anti-critical care. Okay. <laughs> you forget my patient now. Let us apply these rules in our patient here to, for I know re repetition will uh, give an idea about the uh, protocol. This is a 50 year old patient with sickle cell disease, coronary cranial failure on many antihypertensive. He developed vasoclusive crisis. He received multiple doses of uh, intravenous uh, antihypertensives. He complained of push or of, of drop. He complained of hypotension during dialysis session and they came to us comatose, deeply comatose. We started our protocol. Look first to the ventricular system, third and lateral ventricle and the midline shift. Seem okay. No blood inside, normal size, normal size ventricle, no blood inside, no hydrocephalus, no interventricular bleed, and midline shift 1.2 milli towards the right side. This is the distance from skin to the edge of the center ventricle right side. Distance left side, small, small number subtracted from large number over two, it will give you midline shift. 1.2 millimeter is non significant. So, ventricular system is clear. You can exclude hydrocephalus, you can exclude interventricular bleed, and you can exclude big hemorrhage causing midline shift. You can exclude hydrocephalus and the cortical hemorrhage as a cause of coma because cortical hemorrhage to cause deep coma it should be large and you we expect to see significant midline shift. Next step, look for TCD signs of increased intracranial pressure. Balsatility index, high balsatility index 1.9. Balsatility index, this is the right side, sorry, this is the right side. Uh, this is the midbrain here, front, back, this is the right side. Also very high, 2.26, very high. Optic nerve sheet under left side, 0.7, high. Right optic nerve sheet after, 0.73, high. So this patient has no dilatation of the ventricle, no midline shift, and signs of increased pressure and TCD is so so look at both mid-cerebral artery flow to exclude malignant stroke and check basal artery flow. Look for the recent stroke, recent malignant stroke in this patient. This is the left side mid artery, no obstruction. This is the right side, this is the mid-brain, this is the right side mid artery, no obstruction. This is the basal flow, no obstruction. So this patient has signs of increased intracranial pressure and 
absence of any abnormality of the particular system and absence of obstruction of the major cerebral artery. So you need now to give dehydrating measures and please check what one stabilization check by CT. We give hypertonic saline because the patient's hypertension, hyperventilation, and went to two CT after stabilization. We found diffuse watershed infarction, diffuse watershed infarction because of prolonged hypertension from repeated antihypertensive doses and from hemodialysis during hypertension. You see watershed infarction everywhere here and thank you for watching and i'm waiting for your uh, comment and you and i'm happy to answer any questions about this new protocol uh, and see you later another project thank you a lot